Alright, today I just want to talk about my werewolf deck for Magic the Gathering. Uh, first, got a few tokens, just some 2-2 uh, two, two, uh, green wolf tokens, and I got one uh, black 1-1 one, one wolf with death touch token. Um, this is what the flip cards look like. I will explain that uh, at the end of the video, in case you want to use that route. Uh, this is a 21 land deck. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 basic forests. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 basic mountains. I have 3 Scrag the Rag Pits. Um, this card is tap. One, add one to your mana pool. A uh, green and a red tap target creature gets plus one plus one and trample until end of turn. So it's not a bad card and um, if you just want to get some damage through their defense you can give them trample or just make them a little bit stronger. So I got three of these. They're pretty good. I I like them and uh, yeah I'd recommend them. I also have a Kessig Wolf Run. I actually pulled this in my Innistrad booster pack. It is a land. You got a wolf in the background. Oh. It has add one to your mana pool, and then it has X, red and green, tap, target creature, gets plus X plus zero, and gains trample until end of turn. So, you can pay in a total, a whole bunch of um, X if you want, and give it, make a creature huge and give him trample. It could be, even be a game finisher with this card, or just get a bunch of damage through. So, this is a nice card to have. Uh, on to the instant sorceries, enchantments, and such. Let me see, let me see. I have... Two full moons rise, which is one in a green enchantment. Werewolf creature you control get plus one plus zero and have trample. And then if you sacrifice full moons arise, it regenerates all werewolf creatures you control. If you're gonna have a werewolf deck, I do recommend these all the way. There's really not much downfall. It's very cheap to play. It's some nice passive abilities, gives them trample and plus one attack. And if you sacrifice it, you can save them all if you want. So I have two of those. I have three Moon Mists. It's just a one and a green, an instant. It says transform all humans, prevent any, prevent all combat damage that will be dealt this turn by creatures other than werewolves and wolves. So, um, if your creatures aren't transformed, and you don't, well, I'll explain what transforming is later. But it transforms all of your creatures if they're not transformed, or if they are, it even it just prevents all damage that will be done to them, except your creatures, since they're wolves and werewolves, would do their damage. So it's a very nice card. You can either use to transform them or pretty much stop all their damage and just do yours. Very cool card. So I have three of those. I have a Rancor. Rancor. Uh, it is one green. I really like this card. It's an enchantment aura. Enchanted creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two plus zero and it has trample. So it gives your creatures trample and plus two attack. And the special thing about this card is when this card, when Rancor is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, return Rancor to your owner's hand. So you put it on a creature, the creature dies into your graveyard, back to your hand. There's been many games where I just constantly keep putting this out on different creatures, and I really like this card. It's quite good. Rawr. I have two fogs. Can never go wrong with a fog. It's just a one green cost. Creatures deal no combat damage this turn. Uh, there's been quite a few games where fog has saved my butt a few times, especially at the end of the game. It's just a really good card, and uh, it's an instant, so you can play it whenever. Just save yourself. Awesome. So I got two of those. I have two... Increasing Savagery. It is two and two green. It's a sorcery. It has put five plus one counters on target creature. And that's pretty good. So it gives your creature plus five. And then it says if increasing savagery was cast from the graveyard, put ten plus one plus one counters on that creature instead. That just makes your creature humongous. And has a flashback cost for three greater than its cost, so it's a five and two green. And the way flashback works is once you cast this card, it gets sent to your graveyard. If you remember you have this in your graveyard, you can play the flashback cost, and then you get to put 10 counters on your creature, but then you have to exile this card when, uh, when you play uh, the flashback, so you can't just keep flashbacking it. So I have two of those. They're really good. Make your creatures very strong. I have one. Get through fire. It is X and a red. Uh, it's pretty much like a blaze almost, except it, it is a sorcery, but... um. You can have it uh, be an instant pretty much. Uh, you may play Get Through Fire anytime. You can play an instant if you pay it two more to play it. And it just does uh, X damage to target creature or player. So uh, I just have this in case I want to play as an instant or uh, just as a blaze or something. Very cool. I have a neutralize one in a green. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. 
just get rid of some artifact enchantments. I have an Artisan's Sorrow, three and a green, an instant destroy target artifact or enchantment in Scry 2. Look at the top two cards of your library. Put any number of them on the bottom of your library and the rest on the top in any order. So you get to uh, pretty much pick your next two draws or your next draw for the next turn. If you don't like them, just put them on the bottom of your library. Very cool. Uh, I just have this card in because it's a really fun card. I like it. And uh, I won the game a few times with it. It is a Seize the Day. And I do miss how flashback cards from this set had a little graveyard in the corner to let you know that it had a flashback cost. I really like that. It's a three and a red, a sorcery. Untap target creature after this after this phase, there's an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. And its flashback is actually cheaper than its cost. Its flashback is only two in a red. This is a great card and so you can pretty much attack with all your creatures. And if they don't have a lot of defense out or anything, you can uh, untap one of your creatures and then have attack in another main phase after. Very fun. Just like the mechanic and it's a great card. And the flashback is very cheap. I have one, yep, one Shilvan Meteor. It is a three and two red. It is a sorcery. Shilvan Meteor deals 13 damage to target creature. A lot of damage to a creature. Kill most creatures out there. Uh, there will be a few rare occasions where you can't, but it's a very good card. Or if you play a one and two uh, red for it to spend two, rather than pay its card from your hand, you may pay one and two red and remove it from the game with two time counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, remove a time counter. When the last time counter is removed, pay it without paying its mana cost. So you can pay it for two cheaper, but uh, you have to sit on it for two turns and uh, yeah. But yeah, does a lot of damage, and very cool. I have one Predatory Rampage, three and two green. It is a sorcery. Creatures you control get plus three, plus three until end of turn. Each creature your opponent controls blocks this turn if able. So I'll play this card if they have a bunch of creatures that I want to, them to block and get destroyed, or if I just want to win the game, or just throw a lot of damage out. This is a great card. Yeah, I love it. I have one Decimate. I really like this card. It's come in handy quite a few times. Actually saved my butt a few times, too. It is a two, a red, and a green. Uh, destroy target artifact, target creature, target enchantment, and target land. So sometimes you get to destroy just four cards, or if not, you can either destroy an artifact, creature, it's just, it's a very good card, I like it. And then the last uh, instant is a fate conf configuration, a one and three red. Instant fate configuration deals five damage to target creature or planeswalker. If it's your turn, scry two. Not a bad card. Four cost for five damage. I just don't have any lightning bolts left, and uh, yeah, not a bad card. Cool. On to the creatures. And um, the main transform mechanic of uh, werewolves is at the beginning of each upkeep, if no spells were cast last turn, transform Scorn Villager. So if I have them out on the field, and uh, it's my turn, and I don't feel like playing anything, I get to flip it at the beginning of my opponent's upkeep, or if it's their turn and they don't play anything, I get to flip it at the beginning of my upkeep. Um, so that's the basic mechanic for the werewolves. Um, Scorn Villager, it is a one and a green human werewolf. It has tap, add one green to your mana pool. And it's a one one creature, and if no spells were cast last turn... Oh yeah, and I do have three three of these. I'll go ahead and show you. These are Double Sleet and KMC Hypermats and Perfect Fits, just because I'll be slipping them in and out a lot to transform them. And they are double slot the cards. And uh, if no spells were cast last turn, you get to transform it into a moon scarred werewolf. It is a green creature. There is no mana cost in the corner. Um, that's how you know it's the back. And uh, it's a half moon, so you know it's been transformed. The color is right there. It is a green card still. So if there's any spells or abilities that affect the color, it is still green. It has vigilance and tap and two tier mana pool. And it has a 2-2 two, two, uh, attack and defense. And the way to transform for every other werewolf that I have in my deck to transform them back to the front side is at the beginning of each upkeep, if a player casts two or more spells that turn, transform uh, Moonscarred Werewolf. So if I play two spells, I gotta transform them next turn. If my opponent plays two spells, I gotta transform them next turn. It's just, I just really like the mechanic. Uh, it makes them, makes them sometimes just want to play spells even though they don't want to just so your cards won't transform or um, yeah, it's very good. I, I just have fun with it. It's a fun mechanic. I have two Kruvin Outlaw. 
It is one and two red, a human rogue werewolf. It has first strike, which is lovely, and has the same effect as the other werewolf. If no spells were cast last turn, you to transform. It's a two-two creature on the front, and um, on the back, it, it does show you what the creature strength is on the back. It is a three-three, so that's what that little dent is there, that little indent. And then you do a little flippy flip. It becomes Terror of Croon Pass. It is a red card, a creature werewolf with a double strike. Each werewolf you control can't be blocked except by two or more creatures, so it would have menace, and it's a 3 3 creature. Cool. And then I have two of those. Go ahead and put it back in the sleeve. Yeah, and um, I just decided to double sleeve these because when you're playing with a bunch of flip cards and you don't use uh, like these as a placeholder, you just end up flipping them a lot. I'll explain how this works at the end. I have two. Mandarin uh, Shaman. Uh, it is a three and a red. A human werewolf shaman. Beginning of the upkeep. No spell to turn transform. Bloop, bloop. And the back is really nice, I believe. It becomes in the Tovalar's uh, Mage Hunter. A red creature werewolf. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, Tovalar's Mage Hunter deals two damage to that player. And it's a 5 5 creature. That's a very good passive ability. Makes them not want to play spells or really anything. Except, yeah, it's very cool. So if they play anything, they gotta take two damage if he's transformed. Very cool. Two of those. This is the only non-transforming uh, creature cards I have in this deck. They're uh, Immer Wolves. It is a one, a red, and a green. It is a creature wolf. It has Intimidate. This creature can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or creatures that share its colors. So it can't be blocked except by artifacts or red or green creatures. It is a 2-2 two, two creature and has other wolf and werewolf creatures you control get plus one, plus one, which is great. And I, this, the second bottom is uh, my favorite. Non-human werewolves you control can transform. So I'll take this one to an example. This is a human werewolf shaman. If it transforms and there's an immer wolf on the field, it's just a werewolf. And since it says non-human werewolves, you control can't can transform. Even if they play two or three or four spells on their turn or your turn, he still stays in his werewolf state. Very cool to have the Immer Wolf in this deck. So I have two of those. Let me slip this back in the sleeve. And then the next creatures I have, I have an instigator gang it is a three and a red human werewolf attacking creatures you control get plus one plus zero and it's a two three and on the back it's a five five so it's nice uh, even if this attacks it will get plus one and uh, let's see what happens if no spells were played if no spells were played it becomes a wild blood pack a red creature werewolf with a trample lovely attacking creatures you control get plus three plus zero until end of turn and it's a five five so that's a big big plus it's very nice very cool card, and I have two of those. I have the next card I have, or cards, is the Wolf Bitten Captive. I have two of these. It is a one green cost, it is a human werewolf, and it's a 1 1 creature. Uh, it's lovely to get this like first hand or something. And it is a 1 and a green, its ability. Wolf Bitten Captive gets plus 2 plus 2 on end of turn. Activate this ability only once each turn. So it can become a 3 3 maximum uh, with this ability, but it's a very nice card. Then if you get to flip it or transform it, it becomes Crawl Horde Killer, uh, a green creature werewolf. The 2-2, two, two. and then if you pay 3 and a green, Crawl Horde Killer gets plus 4, plus 4 until end of turn. Activate this ability only once each turn. So for a 1 cost, if they don't play a spell on the... If you play this the first hand, and they don't play a spell on their first hand, you get to flip them. And that's already quite a good advantage. So that's always fun. I love um, just some of the mechanics of these cards. It's amazing. Um, I have a Huntsmaster of the Fells. It is a two, a red, and a green. A human creature werewolf. Whenever this creature enters the battle floor, trans or transforms into Huntsman of the Fells, put a two, two. Boom, boom, boom. Two, two. Uh, green wolf creature token on the battlefield and gain two life. So whenever he comes in, you get to slap down a two, two wolf token. And you also gain two life. So it's very cool. And then he is a 2-2 two, two creature, so he's not that strong, but his ability is quite good. If he gets transformed, he becomes Ravager of the Fells. It has a green and red creature, you can tell by the multicolored thing. And it has Trample, it's a 4-4. Four, four. Whenever, whenever this creature transforms into Ravager of the Fells, it deals 2 damage to target opponent, and 2 damage 
up to uh, one target that creature controls. So it would do two damage to uh, the opponent and two damage to a creature. So if it flips, you'd get a wolf token. If it flips, they take two damage and a creature takes two damage. So this card is really fun to just keep flipping if you can. Very cool. I do have a Planeswalker in this deck. It is Karak Relentless. Uh, it is a three and a green. He is an interesting Planeswalker. When Gurk Relentless has two or fewer loyalty counters on him, transform him. So this is a double-sided Planeswalker. Um, he comes in with three loyalty counters on it, and I'm on the front card. He has only a zero and a zero ability. The zero abilities are Gurk Relentless deals three damage to target creature. That creature deals damage equal to its power to him. So you'd really only want to damage a creature with the power of one or two to be able to transform him. And its other ability is put a 2-2 Green Wolf creature token onto the battlefield. So if worse comes to worse, you can use his first ability, put a 2-2 Green Wolf token on the battlefield. The next turn, do two da do three damage to the wolf, and the wolf will do two damage to him, bringing his loyalty down to one. But then you would get to transform him. And on the back, he becomes Garak the Veal Cursed. He is a black and green creature. Um, and it has plus one. Put a 1-1 one, one black wolf creature token with death touch on the battlefield. That's where this comes in. Very nice. Makes them not want to attack or anything. And then uh, it has negative 1. Sacrifice a creature. If you do, search your library for a creature card. Reveal it and put it in your hand. Then shuffle your library. So you can kind of like just pick any creature card you want from uh, your deck. If you sacrifice a wolf. Like even a token or something. Very cool. And then it has negative three creatures you control, gain trample, and get plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. So if you use the sacrifice ability a lot or you just have a lot of creatures in your graveyard, you can get quite a bit at plus X plus X and uh, it might even be a game finisher. So he's a very cool planeswalker and uh, I like the transform ability. That's why I placed him inside the werewolf deck. The next creatures I have are... Mm, Ulvenwald uh, Mystics, uh, 2 and 2 green, creature, shaman, werewolf, it's just a 3-3 three, three creature. If no spells were played last turn, transform. Then it becomes Unvelward uh, Primordials. It is a green creature wolf, and it's a 5-5, five, five, and it just has uh, 1 green, regenerate uh, Unvelward Primordials. So it's very cool, it's just a card I wanted, just if I wanted to... Regenerate him I could and it's a very cheap regeneration cost just to keep him alive. Very cool card. Pretty simple. Nothing too crazy about this one. But it's nice so I have two of them. Uh, I only have one Daybreak Ranger. It is two and a green. It is a human archer werewolf. It is a 2-2. Two -two. Its front ability is mm, okay. I really have yet to use it. It has a tap. Daybreak Ranger deals two damage to target creature with flying. So only creatures with flying but that's that sounds like a green thing. And then if you flip it on the back, if it gets transformed, it becomes Nightfall Predator, a green creature werewolf, and it has red. So this is a card that you do want to play with, like, uh, red mana as well. Where is it? Yeah, that's why I have a red and green deck, and I have them in here. It says red and tap, Nightfall Predator, fights target creature. So this is a very cool card. If they have some creatures that they don't want to attack with, you can pretty much make them attack with it. And you can put on, like, a increasing savagery on them or something like that and just just get rid of them it's a very nice card but i only have one of them in this deck and then the next cards i have i have a grizzled outcasts for an a green human werewolf it is just a 4-4 creature and if he gets transformed he becomes a uh, collar horde wantons wantons interesting art it becomes a 7-7 creature, just a big creature. So not bad. For uh, 5 cost, you become a 7-7. Not bad. So I have one of those. I also have a Villagers of Eastwald. It is 2 and a green, human werewolf. And it's just a 2-3 creature. It's not bad for a 3 cost. It's alright. And then if you get flipped, he becomes Halpack of Eastwood. A green creature werewolf, and it's a 4-6 creature. Not bad. Not bad. So I just have one of those in here. And I believe this is the last card. Yep, this is my last card. The last card I have is a villain, I, village ironsmith. One in a red. 
That is a human werewolf with first strike. At the beginning of each upkeep, if no spells were cast last turn, transform village irons uh, village ironsmith. It's just a one one creature, and if he transforms, he becomes Iron Fang, a red creature werewolf with first strike. That's a three one. Very cool. And um the way that uh these placeholders work, say if I wanted to do it for Grok the Relentless, let me look for him real quick. Right there. Instead of having Grok the Rentless in the sleeve, I would have this card in the sleeve and Grok the Rentless would be on the side, like kind of in the sideboard situation, just outside of play. And uh, this does have a regular magic back, so it's not like other tokens. And I would just check off uh, Grok the Relentless. And then once I pay the three in the green, I would then like swap this and put him down. That's if uh, you don't have like opaque sleeves or something just in case you want a placeholder so you can do this uh for all your cards if you want you can use these instead and just have these on the side and whenever you want you can uh play the checked off card and you can put like the power and strength on there and then put it on the field and then flip it or not it's just uh if you don't want to play with sleeves or anything you do always have this option so that's uh what those are yeah all right werewolves are pretty fun to play with interesting mechanics and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed and any comments or suggestions on how to improve it, I would love to hear. All right. Thanks. Bye.